your all in. <laughs> Many thanks to the man in black for carrying on in my place in the last two broadcasts. He's a man after my own heart's blood. To now to the tale of a man who had left me, but was afraid to claim his inheritance. And why? You hear it. In tonight's performance, in the mystery playhouse. Tonight, the mystery playhouse raises its curtain on a weird situation. The case of a man who has left great wealth but lacked the courage to claim it for reasons that we see here. S. Weir Mitchell has written his classic story for man's grief versus his cowardice. Listen now as the mystery playhouse presents Dilemma. This is Faulkner House. This somber mass of stone frowning down on Bedford Village. This is the year of grace 1891. The year that Bedford men remember. This is the story of Faulkner House, of young Gerald Faulkner, and the terrible choice he had to make. And it was told unto him that greed will consume a man and all his works and the innermost places of his soul. He walked slowly up the stairs, concealing the vial of yellow liquid in the palm of his hand. His hair is damp with the terror of the thing he plans to do. He opens the door at the top of the stairs, slowly, cautiously, very quietly. He moves across the old man's room, the lace of his shirt front trembles in the small light of the bedside candle. He opens the stopper on the vial, empties the yellow liquid into the glass. He turns quickly and goes to the door. Gerald! Gerald! Yes, yes, Grandfather? What are you doing in my room? I thought it was time for your medicine, but I saw you were asleep. All right, all right, I'll take the full medicine. This is it, this glass. Just speak up, is it? I think so, Grandfather. You think so? Don't think? No. Oh, there's my fool spoon. Well, what are you staring at? You've seen me take my medicine before. Uh, I'd better be sure that's the right glass, perhaps. This doesn't smell right, Grandfather. Maybe... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break it. Didn't you? No, I... Why are you staring at me like that? You didn't have the nerve, did you, Jack? I, I don't understand. You didn't have the nerve to kill me. Oh, I saw you crawl in here and put something in my glass. But you didn't have the courage to go through with it. Did you? Did you? No. No, I didn't have the courage. I wish I had. Huh. I thought so. You're a coward, Gerald. That's why I hate you. You're a coward. You always have been. You couldn't even kill a helpless old man. No, no, no. Don't go. Well, I... Stay where you are. I have something to say to you. You didn't have to try to kill me, Gerald. No. You see, the doctor already has told me my heart may stop at any moment. What? And now you'll cut me off without... Oh, no. On the contrary, you'll still inherit my money, Gerald. Every second. Even after I try. Even after that. Then you can pay your debts and marry Ellen, if she'll have you. And I'll die happy thinking how I provided for you. For it will be the strangest inheritance a man has ever known. <laughs> now get out of you, you coward. Go to Ellen's house. Tell her what a rich man you're going to be. <laughs> Grandfather says I'll have plenty of money soon, Ellen, so you needn't worry. Gerald, I wish we didn't have to talk about your grandfather's money all the time. 
Why don't you go to work, darling? Work? <laughs> oh, my dear child. It would take 20 years of work to pay off my gambling debts alone. Oh, I've waited all my life for that money. Now, look. Come here and kiss me, sweetie. And promise you'll never talk such nonsense again. Oh, Jerry. Come on, come on, the back of your neck. Ah, that's a nice place. Please, Jerry. Oh, you'll have a carriage of your own and a lovely fur cape. Oh, darling. And the diamonds. Ah, oh, we'll be married in style, my dear. Such style. As soon as dear grandfather returns to his maker. Gerald, don't talk like that. What? Well, why not? He can't live forever, poor soul. His heart, you know, it's going to run down someday. Just like an old clock. Uh, Gerald. Your grandfather is dead. I'm sorry, my boy. His heart just gave out. Uh, did he... Oh, uh, Was he happy at the end? Did he say anything? Nothing unusual, except that well, he, he did mumble something about an inheritance. I'm not sure of the words, mind you, but it, it sounded like uh, uh, the strangest... The strangest inheritance a man has ever known? Yes, yes, that's it. That's exactly what he said. The strangest inheritance a man has ever known. It is the will of Eben Faulkner that his entire estate and holdings there, too, be bequeathed to his devoted grandson, Gerald. His last wishes are contained in a letter which I, as executor, am charged to see properly carried out. Mr. Gerald Faulkner is to take this letter and, on the night of the seventh day after his grandfather's death, Proceed to the cellar of Faulkner House. He is to stand before the steel vault therein and read the letter. Gerald, what is this? Why are we going down here? You'll see, you'll see. Just be patient. Here, let me hold those candles. No, I'm all right. So, we arrive. Behold, my love... Grandfather Eben's ball. <gasps> Gerald! Huh? Oh, oh, I should have warned you. Well, that's only Grandfather Eben's picture. Lifelike, isn't it? Darling, let's get out of here. Oh, no, no, no. We have a little ceremony to perform. My sainted grandfather's last wish. Hey, Grandfather? Oh, Gerald, don't talk to a picture. <laughs> For once, you can't answer back. Can you, old flint heart? Ellen, come here by the door of the vault. Shine the candle on this letter. You'll be the first to see the inheritance. Ah, all I have to do is read the letter. Very simple. I open it, thus, and I read. Beloved girl, standing now at the door of the vault, on which the photo of you wrote, so you, instead of me, instead of you, turn the letter. No. No. Gerald, what's the matter? Oh, it's a joke, a crazy joke. He couldn't be. Gerald. Oh, read it. Read what it says. Darling, read it. My dearly beloved Gerald, you are standing now at the door of the vault behind which is my total earthly wealth which I bequeath solely to you. However, I have arranged a delicate mechanism which, when you insert the key contained in this letter, is not enough to to blow you and the house and the inheritance into eternity. But, but it may be that I am merely testing your courage. It may be that I have not arranged this mechanism to explode. To unlock the door or not to unlock it, it is your choice. Remember, if you are brave enough to insert the key, you will hear five bell-like strokes of the mechanism. After the fifth has sounded... You will either be a rich man, or you will be blown to bits. Oh, Gerald, can't you see? He's only testing you. It's all a bluff. Do you think so? Of course. You mean he wanted to get his revenge by scaring me? Making me afraid to open the vault? Thinking I'd not know the money's there just out of reach? That must be it, Gerald. Ah, you old skinflint. I'll show you whether I'm a coward or not. Give me the key, Ellen. I'm going to open it right now. Here. Go ahead, darling. Delicate mechanism. I'll show him. I'll... Delicate mechanism? 
Well, go ahead, dear. Delicate mechanism. Well, it could be, Ellen. It, it could be he put explosives in the door. You don't know how he hated it. Oh, it's not that I'm afraid. I'll do it all right. Right now. Well, Gerald? I can't do it, Ellen. I can't. I keep looking at that picture over the bowl, and I know. Gerald, give me the key. I'll do it myself. No, 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 no. You can't. It, it's, it's my life you're risking, too. Your life? Your life? You think I'm a coward, don't you? Gerald, if you're afraid, then just forget it. It's your problem. As for myself, I don't want the money. Do you think I need money to love you, to marry you? You could go to work, Gerald. Work? I am going to work, Ellen. Darling. I'm going to work on Grandfather's book. He's not going to cheat me out of the fork no money. I've got six months to get to it. I'm going to get Mason. I'm going to dig down and break a hole into the back of the boat. We'll fix Grandfather, even. We've got six months. We'll dig and dig and dig. Hello, Mr. Howard. How's the job coming? Oh, Mr. Faulkner. I'm glad you're here. I want a word with you. Oh? We're given our notice at noon. The men huh? want no more of this job. We're quitting. Quit? You can't quit. You've got to keep on with it. We're quitting, Mr. Faulkner. We just got wind of the story that's going around. It doesn't play square with us. My men want no dealings with explosives. You can't stop now. You can't. Tell the men to stay. Tell, tell them I'll pay them double, triple. Tell them anything you want. Only, only don't stop digging. We're quitting at noon, Mr. Faulkner. My instructions as executor direct me to visit you each month, Mr. Faulkner, with a reminder of the time remaining. The time remaining, that is, before I have the cellar of Faulkner House sealed up. This visit, sir, is to remind you that you have only five months left. Gerald, please, please give up this insane obsession. Forget there ever was an inheritance. Why torture yourself like this? I won't give it up. That money's mine. It belongs to me. There must be some way to get it. I'll find that way. I'll go to the architect who designed the book. Hey, that's what I'll do. I'll go to the architect. Yes, Mr. Faulkner, I designed the vault for your grandfather. Oh, then you can help me. Tell me, is there any secret subterranean channel leading to it? No, Miss Faulkner. There's only one way into that vault. Through the door. Four months left, Mr. Faulkner. Four months. Four months? There must be a way. I can't stand this. There must be a way. You don't want a locksmith, Mr. Faulkner. You want a fool. The entire village knows there's something mighty peculiar going on at the Faulkner house. You won't find a locksmith in these parts to go within ten miles of it. Three months left, Mr. Faulkner. Three months. Gerald, will you please give it up? No, no, no. There must be a way. There must be. Mr. Faulkner, I've dealt with explosives all my life, sir. An examination is only one way to tell whether or not the door can be opened without causing an explosion. Oh, then there is a solution. Oh, thank goodness you're my last hope. Not so fast. I meant after the door is opened. After it's opened? Oh, but that might prove too late. Doctor, 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 it's terrible. I, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't do anything but think of that ball. I warn you, Gerald, if you keep on like this, I can't be responsible. My advice is to leave Faulkner House for a while. Leave? I can't leave, doctor, I can't. Oh, there it is, millions, think of it, millions. This is in my grasp. If I, if I don't have it, I'm without a penny. I'll be a pauper. I can't do it, Doctor. I can't. I must have that money. If you value money above your life, I can do nothing for you. Your condition is deplorable. A few more weeks the way you've been going, and you'll end up like Johnny Rum, the village idiot. Johnny Rum? If you keep on the way you've been going. The village idiot? Hey, Doctor. Doctor, you've given me an idea. You've given me an idea. <laughs> Johnny, 
Johnny, he's concentrating. You know what you're to do? The rum. Rum for Johnny yeah, Rum? Yeah, you'll get rum plenty. Now, listen, listen carefully. As soon as I'm gone, you wait 20 minutes, right? Sure. And you take the key. Now, where's the key, Johnny? Sure. That's it, that's it. And you take the key and place it right here in this lock. And you turn it all the way around. Is all that clear? Rum. 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 Yes, yes, Rum. I'll give you a gallon of rum. Now, listen to me, will you? Listen to me, will you? Rum for Johnny Rum. I'll be down at the tavern waiting for you. Now, remember. 20 minutes. Then the key. Room for Johnny. Room for Johnny. Room. Room. Johnny, don't let have it, Johnny. Not yet. I told you, wait. Wait until after I'm gone. Don't you understand, you crazy idiot? Wait 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. I'll be at the top. Meet me. Barkeep, another brandy. Yes, sir. What time? Uh, nine fifteen, sir. He should be here by now. Why doesn't he come? What's that? I don't know. Some commotion outside, sir. Oh, Mr. Johnny, run the Johnny, Johnny. What happened, Tom? Oh, he's a bloody sight, all right, Mr. Faulkner, but don't mind that. He's not as bad off as he looks. Rub. Caught him red-handed in your cellar. Fooling around, he was with a key about to open some big door. Why, you fool? You had no right to arrest him. He wasn't robbing my place. I sent him down there. I sent him. Rub. You sent him? You sent him to open your grandfather's vault? Well, certainly. Well, well, that is I mean. You mean you sent a poor idiot to die in your place in case the vault exploded? I've heard of cowards, Mr. Faulkner. There came out of here. I'm Tootie who I think. Wait a minute. 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 Hello, Gerald. Well? The doctor says you'll be all right, Gerald. He says all you need is a little rest. If, uh, if there was only some way to fix an attachment and turn the key from a distance. Gerald, this isn't any game anymore. This is your life you're playing with now. You must give this up. Aunt Ellen, I've gone so far. Oh, I can't give it up. But you must. Oh, Gerald, let's get married now. Let's get married and leave Faulkner House and forget there ever was an inheritance. Can't, Eleanor. I just can't. Very well, Gerald. You don't have to. I'll go alone. Ellen, no. You'll have to make up your mind. Which is it to be? The money or me? You'll have to decide which you value more. Ellen. Ellen, you can you can have a carriage. For pay. I don't want them. The money or me, Gerald. All right, Ellen. You win. It's you. Uh, pour you a drink, Mr. Pierce? Uh, no, no, thank you, Mr. Faulkner. I only came over to tell you that tonight is the last night. At sunrise, we seal the vault. Of course, now that you've given up all intentions of opening it... Give up? <laughs> oh, I don't be a fool. What Miss Ellen said that you... Oh, that! <laughs> well, it was merely my way of holding her. Huh. But I'll have Ellen and the money. There's still plenty of time. What well, do you mean? That... Oh, certainly. <laughs> you think I'll be a pauper when all I have to do is give this little key one twist? <laughs> what time is it? Uh... 2 a.m., Mr. Porter. Well, then, Mr. Pierce, I don't think there will be any explosion. But if you do, you better get out of here. Well, in just one hour, <laughs> in just one hour, I'm going downstairs and I'm going to open that vault. <laughs>
Good evening, Grandfather. Good evening, Grandfather. <laughs> well, you thought you'd torture me forever, did you? So you thought I wouldn't have the courage to open your filthy vault. <laughs> well, here I am. <laughs> you haven't succeeded, old Flint Heart. Your little scheme hasn't paid off. I'll have Ellen and the money. And the money! <laughs> and every cent of it I spend will curse your miserable soul. <laughs> now look. Look carefully, Grandfather. And this is the moment you never thought would happen. <laughs> I've outbluffed you. <laughs> this is the moment. What? What? Uh, put the key in the lock. And now, bring on your bell-like strokes. Bring them on. <laughs> and may your soul rot in a tunnel. unto him that greed will consume a man and all his works and the innermost places of his soul. And that, my friends, was Dilemma by S. V. Mitchell, tonight's performance in a mystery playhouse. Not a bad one in that time story, huh? <laughs> well, now to further ahead to your evening's restfulness, we take you to the green room for a preview here in our next attraction. Tiptoe down this way, huh? <laughs> Follow me. Please. Come, go. <laughs> Come. Mr. Fox, uh, this is Mrs. North. Delighted. Right Sit down, both of you. What was the commotion downstairs, Weasel? Uh, one of the customers got peeved with Mr. Crane on account of he dropped five grand three days running. Five grand? Yeah. So we decided the tables was fixed, and so we decided Mr. Crane ought to be fixed, and so we decided to fix him. With a gun? What? Yeah. Only I removed it from him forcefully, and we tied him up and left him in a coat room. Indeed. So Crane owes his life to you, eh? Well, well. And I am indebted to you for preserving the manager of my club. Well, Weasel, it looks like you rate a bonus. Oh, I don't want no bonus, Mr. Fox. Huh? What? Why not? Well, uh, that's what I went to see you about. I, um, I... Uh, you tell him, Mrs. North. Mr. Fox, Weasel would like to resign, if you don't mind. Ah, uh, looking for greener pastures, eh? Huh? Uh, greener pastures? Oh, no, it's just that, um... Uh, well, uh... Suppose you decided to make a new start in life, Mr. Fox. Only after you did, you found out it wasn't. You, you'd want it too, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, want of what? Uh, resign. Except uh, you wouldn't, of course. Resign? No, uh, decide to make a new start. Only he did, so he does. I hope you don't mind. Uh, I... I beg your pardon. It's okay, Mr. Fox. I never can understand it either, except, of course, I ain't very bright, but... Is it okay for me to quit? Well, if you're not happy here... Oh, it ain't that I'm not happy. It's just that, well, like she told you, whatever she did tell you, it's like that. Oh. Oh, well, I'll think it over. Okay. And I sure hope you decide to let me quit. And I kind of... That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Here's the coat room. I'll go and see how Mr. Lawson is. All right. But where's Lulu and the hat check girl? I told her to stay here and watch Mr. Lawson and holler if he tried to get away. There she is, Weasel. Where? On the floor. No, that's Mr. Lawson. We left her. 
Hey, now you're right, that isn't. It's Lulu, and she's sleeping. Oh, she's been knocked out. Hey, I guess she has. Mr. Lawson must have come through and got loose and conked her. It looks like it. Uh, come on, we got to warn Mr. Crane. All right, please, but uh, how about Lulu? Oh, I think she'll be okay. But uh, Mr. Crane won't if Mr. Lawson gets to him first. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be in here at the table. No, that's funny. He don't seem to be no place. Ah, uh, wait a minute. There's his wife. Maybe she knows where we went. Come on. Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Crane. Oh, uh, you're just the person I want to see. Where's my husband? You took the words right out of my mouth. What? Uh, I was about to interrogate you on the same point. Oh, haven't you seen him? Uh, a little while ago, but not since Mr. Lawson escaped. Oh, who's Mr. Lawson? Uh, one of the customers which wants to shoot Mr. Crane. Oh. Well, if you find Kenneth and he hasn't been shot, tell him I'm looking for him. Okay. You don't seem very concerned about your husband's life. The only concern I have about anyone killing him is that it would keep me from having that pleasure myself. Uh, maybe he went upstairs to see Mr. Fox. Well, let's go see, Diesel. If you find him, tell him I'm waiting. What has she got against her husband? Mitzi McGilroy. Who's she? A dame which Mr. Crane is infected with. Oh, yes. Mr. Crane is uh, all the time playing upon Mitzi all kinds of expensive gifts, which Mrs. Crane thinks it ought to be by right spended at her. Well, no wonder she didn't. <gasps> What's the matter? Look, Rita, the bottom of the stairs. Why, it's... Mr. Crane. It looks like he's had an accident. Let's see. His neck seems to be broke. Or uh, something is broke, anyhow. On a kind of... He's dead. Oh, Weasel. He must have fell down the steps. Mm-hmm. Fell or was pushed. Well, that was the better half of the Mr. and Mrs. North combination right in the middle. Another murder. If you followed the adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North at all, you know that that's nothing unusual for them, no. It looks like Jerry North misses out on this one since he's away on a business trip, but he'll be there in spirit, nevertheless. So you'll be with us in fact next time when a mystery playhouse curtain rises. <laughs>